Shalom. Today we are going to talk about some spelling anomalies in the scriptures, places where something is written but it is not what we read. This phenomenon is called Kativ Kri or Kari Kativ sometimes. You see the word Kativ, it comes from Kotev, it means written, and Kri comes from the word Kore, to read. So we have what is written and what is read. The standard transliteration for the kaf of kativ is k, and the kuf of kri is translated with a q, and we'll see why that'll be important in a minute. Now the Torah scrolls are written without vowels altogether, so this is something that you have to know in advance about how you're going to read it, if there's an anomaly. As the Masoretic text began to be formed, the Masoretes made some judgment call on, some, on certain words that they would not be pronounced the way they were written. So as we begin to see printed texts, and the earliest printed texts we have are the Aleppo Codex, maybe the 10th century, the Leningrad Codex, or maybe the 11th century, we begin to see these notations of how to pronounce something differently than the way it is spelled. There are people who maintain that these spelling anomalies were given to Moses at Mount Sinai at the same time that he received the text and that they show hidden and secret meanings. And other people believe that they were errors that happened, scribal errors that happened over time in the early copying of the text by the scribes. The most common of these, of course, is the name of the Lord, yud Hey vav Hey. As we said, in any scrolls, there will be no vowels at all. But in printed texts that have vowels, this is the protocol which is used. There are about 6,000 repetitions of the Tetragrammaton of these four letters naming the name of God. The most of them are pronounced Adonai. And so in a printed text, you will see yud he vav he with the vowels of Adonai imposed on it. And this is what you're looking at in the second line. Here are the four letters, yud he vav he and the vowels that go with Adonai. So most of the time, you will say Adonai. There are times where the actual word Adonai appears before the yud he vav he and so you don't say Adonai, Adonai twice to make the difference. You say Elohim, and this is what you see in the third line. The vowels of Elohim are superimposed on those four letters for the name of Yehovah. Now the first case of saying Adonai is so common that very often the vowels are not inserted at all, even in a printed and vowelized text. But the Elohim form will be pointed. It will have the vowels on it. In general, in a printed text, when we come across this Kativ Kri, there are several ways that the corrections are shown. They might appear in the margin, they might appear in line, they might appear in footnotes, and we're going to look at all of those examples. From some Bibles you can find online, if you go to this website, Tanakh US, you will see the Westminster Leningrad Codex. So Genesis 14, 2, there is a name of a town, Sivoyim. What is written in the scroll is what you see in the red and, and above the line. The correction which is made by the Masoretes is in blue and it's on the line. And it's to be read Sivoyim. And this is not a big difference in the spelling, just the Vav. We're going to see some examples of what happens. So if you look at this website, Tanakh.us, all the Kativ Kri corrections are shown like this. The Kativ, what is written, is above the line, it's in a different color. And then the Kri, how you read it, is on the line and it's in a different color, blue. So we would call this an inline correction. Unfortunately, in blueletterbible.org, as much as I like the site and use it, I do not see the corrections noted anywhere they simply show the word with no vowels. It also doesn't appear in a different color. I did that for you so that you could see that that's the word we're talking about. It just appears in line, no correction, but no vowels. 
On the Mahon Mamre site, we see that the there's sort of a partial correction made here, and they just vowelize the word. They don't show that the Katib is different from the creed. They just put vowels on it so that you read it correctly, it's civilian, and it's not in another color. If you look at the grid on Biblehub.com, these are all the same verse, Genesis 14.2, you will see the Katib with no vowels, and then you see the K, and that tells you it's the Katib. It's the what is written. And then it gives you the Cree and it gives you the Q to tell you that this is what you read and it gives you the vowelized form. Here are some pictures from a few different books that I have. Sometimes the inline text will have a, a circle or a star over it which tells you to go down to the bottom. The footnote is there. So as you're reading and you see the little dot, I say, oh, it's a verse 14. You see there's another footnote for a different verse also on this page, but this one is chapter 14, verse 2. And it's not very clear, but it is written with the Vav in it, and it says Kuf for Cree. This is how you read it. Here is another example of a book which has a footnote. The footnote here is indicated by the Kuf. That means there's a Cree version. You go down to the bottom of the page, you dial at 14, Genesis 14, verse 2, and it gives you the correct spelling with the Vav in it. Here is another example of a printed text, which has a little circle for a note in the margin. You come out to the margin, there's a circle, there's a spelling, and there's a kuf telling you this is how you read this word. Now some of these substitutions are made because the Masoretes felt like the word that was used was too harsh or too strong, and so they have substituted a different word altogether. You see in Deuteronomy 28.30, as part of the curses if a man marries a wife and another man, it's translated here, lies with her. Really, the word that you see in blue, yishkalena, is considered too vile to speak, has the concept of, of being raped. So they substitute that word. When you see that, you're supposed to say yishkavena, and that is the kri, the red form of the verb. So you see it in the first example as I printed here. This is from the Tanakh.us, how they would print that. The second one is the Mahon Mamre, which doesn't change the color, but it shows you the inline correction. The word that you don't say has no vowels. The word that you do say has the vowels. This is another place where that verb is used and substituted, and I just brought it to show you that it is translated as ravished. It's a very violent word, used about four times. I think it's always substituted. It's never pronounced. In an odd case in the book of Ruth, there is a Ketiv Kri where there, is, there are no letters. So the Ketiv is just the vowels of a word. And we have a little star, so we go down to the bottom of the page. I'm sorry, this is a very old book, and so it, printing is not very clear, but it's Ruth 3, verse 5. And it tells you at the bottom a lie. This is the word that you're to read. We need to put in an Aleph Lamed Yud, a lie unto me, and it says Kri is what you read, Velo Kativ, and it's not written. That's very unusual. There's only a few incidents of that. So more recently, I did a video on the, some small words, and we covered the difference between Lo, that means no, and Lo, that means to him. And actually, there are perhaps about 15 cases of what appears to be a misspelling in the various scrolls. And one of them is here in Psalm 100, verse 3. I printed the Tanakh.us. I've, I've used it consistently because they have this very nice format of showing the Ketiv Kri. The verse says, Du ki Yehovahu Elohim. Know that Yehovah, he is God, who asanu, he made us. And then we have these two choices. They both sound the same. Velo anachnu, 
so it can be read either. He made us and not ourselves. We didn't make ourselves. Or, velo anachnu, we are his. Amo, his people, vitzon marito, the sheep of his pasture. Going back to the earliest translations, the Septuagint uses the no form. He has made us and we didn't make ourselves. Lo anachnu, we didn't make ourselves. The Targums from the first century translate it, and we belong to him, we are his. It's a bit of a different idea, although both ideas are true. He made us, we didn't make ourselves. He made us, and we are his. One of the other cases of this homonym confusion, it's very interesting, is in 2 Kings 8.10. At the time, Hazael is a subordinate of the king of Syria, who is Ben-Hadad. Ben-Hadad is sick. And Ben-Hadad sends Hazael to Elisha to ask him whether he is going to recover or not. So we see in this verse, Vayomer elav Elisha, and Elisha says to him, to Hazael, Lech, go, emor, say. Then we have two options. Lo chayu tichye. In other words, Hazael is to say to Elisha, you will not live. Or, and more low, and say to him, say to Ben-Hadad, you will live. But the end of the verse, Vihar'ani, and he has shown me, Yehovah has shown me, that mot yamut, he will surely die. It seems a little confusing if Elisha says to him, go tell the king, you will surely live. But God has shown me, Elisha, that he will surely die. However, Hazael is very clever, and so it appears that we would use a more low, tell him you will surely live, because this is what Hazael does. He goes back to the king and says, Elisha said, you will surely live. And he does so in good conscience, because that is what Elisha has said, but he knows he's going to die. And in fact, Hazael smothers the king and becomes king, and so the king surely did die. One more interesting example, and I have covered this elsewhere, is there are two parallel verses in 1 Kings 7.23 and 2 Chronicles 4.2. The verses, if you take the time to go over them, you will see they're exactly the same, but there appears to be a misspelling in the written form of the verse in 1 Kings. And this is talking about the construction of the laver. And it talks about the size of the laver, that it is 10 cubits across and 30 cubits around. This appears to be some bad math, or maybe as some people would like to think that the ancient peoples were primitive and they just didn't really know math and they are rounding the numbers out. But actually, the misprint, the word for the measure, which is going around the circumference, is misspelled. It has an extra hay on it. And this adds up, literally, to something very interesting. If we take the spelling for the measure with the extra hay, the numerical equivalent for those letters is 111. If we take the proper spelling, the numerical equivalent is 106. If you set that out as a fraction and times it, times the 30 that is mentioned as the circumference in the verse, the resulting circumference is corrected exactly according to pi 31415. So perhaps there are hidden meanings to all these kativ anomalies which appear in the Torah scrolls. Till next time, Tasimata Inayam Al Hashemayim. Keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.